Welcome to Time Bolt Live Office Hours on September 15, 2022. You are live with Doug and Quinston. We are here to check your workflows, answer questions, and make sure that you get the most out of Time Bolt. We've had some fun, exciting developments with new product features this last week that we can review later on today. After we get through some of the questions, we will be talking about markers, turbo mode, batch processing, and how you can use fast forward silences to layer in some texture to your design. Today, we have Joe Simpson on the line along with Hano. Can you kind of give me some context on like how long you've been making video? How long have you known about Timebolt? Uh, I'm probably a month or so into Timebolt. And uh, yeah, there's some of that noise. Um, so yeah, I, I'm pretty new to it, but uh, probably 20 or 30 videos I've made using it. It's been pretty life-changing. But outside of essentially using all of the default settings, I haven't played, haven't had much of a need to play with much more than just that. Just the default? All right, excellent. And do you typically render in Timebolt or do you export into other design editors? Uh, I do everything in... Do everything in Premiere Pro. Okay, excellent. And do you, uh, uh, Joe, if you have any questions, uh, just jump in. It kind of helps, you know, if you like have a starting point. I, I, I don't really know how you're, are you editing all of your content footage inside Timebolt? Uh, are, are you or are you just using some basic default settings and exporting to Premiere? Uh, default settings and exporting to Premiere. Okay. And really the, I guess the primary question that I currently have, I'm sure there's an easy workaround. I just don't know what it is yet, is say I'm doing a screen, uh, screen recording. And when you're talking, everything is fine. But sometimes you'll find that you quit talking you start using you know the mouse and you're just focusing on the screen and then that's getting cut off and i know there has to be an easier way to extend it but it seems like when you drag it in Premiere Pro, Pro it's trying to override the next clip and then you kind of have to like move everything around on the timeline. I'm, I'm guessing there's probably a Premiere Pro setting or, or tool that you can use to extend the clip without overriding the next clip. Uh, uh, so there is a feature in Premiere Pro where, uh, in, in Timebolt where you can uh, create the cuts but not delete the silence. So you can just create the cuts and export that from Timebolt. It's it's in the settings section. It's called keep all, all cuts. Are you saying that it's, it's cutting off things prematurely or are you saying that you want to keep some of the silences that it's removing there's situations oh, no, so, yeah situations where you want to keep some of the silence just situations where you want to keep some of the yeah. silence so I, ideally what would happen is that if you just export directly from time bolt what would happen is uh the silences will be deleted everything in red will be deleted uh before you get the xml but there is this option in here which says it's under xml export it says create splits but don't de de delete the detective silence so what this does is it keeps the red parts but then it does create the cuts. So it creates the cuts, but keeps the silences in there so that uh, when you go into Premiere Pro, you can either uh, delete them yourself, or as you said, you can extend it uh, to keep the, you know, to keep the parts that you want. For example, if you're moving the mouse, it, it's a silent piece of the video, but you want to show that the mouse is moving or, or you know, you want to zoom into some area. So you can use this feature over there. You can okay. try it out once, yeah. Here, let me, we covered last week the use of markers, right? Being able to click M. Here, let me, it's like we got some more. Robert, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? This Good. Grant, no, my name is Doug. Hi, Doug. How are you? <laughs> my name is Random. Hey, it's good, good, good to meet you, Robert. Win some, you lose some, right? Uh, so can you tell me a little bit about yourself? We uh, just thought, spoke with Joe. He's uh, been in the program. He's been in Time Bolt for about a month and uh, just kind of showed him some some different tricks. Can you kind of give me a little bit of background about yourself, uh, how we might be able to help you if you're just kind of listening in? Sure. Yeah. So um, we teach computer graphics, 3D animation. We build lots and lots of courses teaching how to do anything from polygon modeling, 3D modeling, computer graphics, rendering, all of that. And yeah, we've been testing Time Bolt. We're starting to use Time Bolt, sort of cut out a lot of the manual labor. And nice. It, and so are these tutorial videos that you're doing? Yep. They're video tutorials. Basically, each course is probably about three hours long. And then we have individual chapter videos. So those individual chapter videos are usually three to five minutes long. And basically, we just have to batch process a lot of stuff all, all the time to, in order to just. Okay. So you're. So you're doing three to there. Each one of your clips is three to five minutes long. They're basically chaptered. You're wanting them as separate video clips and your batch process. So you'll create them and then you'll create what, like five or six of them or something. And then batch process. No, we, we literally will do 70 videos at one time. That wow. is three to five minutes long each and then roughly three hours long. Okay. Cause we're going to have to charge you more for all the use of our servers. <laughs> <laughs> so, you shouldn't have told us that robert uh so so good deal well oh, oh and, and you you actually had two requests so you uh you accepted the invitation to come on is that correct you were doing some stuff with the camtasia capture yeah okay okay you've got a couple you've got a couple requests uh related hey, let me do you just want to do you just want to kind of go over with this i um, uh, appreciate you jumping on here and in quinston he had some questions about camtasia and batch processing right now they're capturing in camtasia and the obviously the sync is mm -hmm. off 
the deal is, is that, you know, they're not wanting to use the TSC project integration because mm -hmm. they're just wanting the batch. And so my recommendation, my first recommendation, Robert, would be to capture with something different other than Camtasia, if possible. Uh, so we just export everything out of Camtasia as an MP4. What, like we still do editing in Camtasia. Then then basically Timebolt is just the last step in our process. Okay. Um... So basically what we want to do is we want to take 60 Camtasia files, uh, batch export an MP4 file. So Camtasia really has nothing to do with Timebolt. And then we take those 60 clips that are MP4 files, and then we run two steps onto it. We want to get it down to one, but we basically run through Timebolt and it works for the most part. But the, the tweak that we want to see is just having that feature to, instead of doing fast forward above a certain amount of time, fast forward below a certain time. And the reason why that is so essential to what we do, whenever we do our recording, you know, it'll be like 10 minutes long. And then there'll be a lot of dead space in there. And that dead space is the easy part to cut out with Time Bolt right now. And the speed ups that we want to do are not actually the longer, they're the shorter jump. So anything below two and a half seconds, we want to speed up because they need to be able to see those micro movements with the mouse and you know any settings that we're tweaking and adjusting. It's basically the reverse of which. Well, uh, can you tell me more about the batch processing thing? Uh, like how you like you do real, uh, know that there is a, a, a batch processing option at the moment in Time Bolt. Yep. The so so have. so we're using that. Yeah. Yep. So and does that solve? your problem or is that is there more uh to it uh so there's two layers to the problems that we're running into i'll let's talk about the um just fast forward the current fast forward it only operates fast forwarding silence above a certain correct yeah i know i got yeah. that i'm talking about the batch the batch processing for the most part works fine we're experiencing some okay. bugs uh what what kind of bugs there's there's been some sync issues uh basically the, the way we're trying to use it is we're trying to sort of run one batch process on time bolt and run a second one sort of not liking doing that but if we run it through media encoder and recompress Correct. everything. Is that because it has like metadata uh, within the MP4? No, file? it's not because of uh, that, that. There is some, I, I don't know what it is, but like when you export up an MP4 from Camtasia and run it through FMPEG, something happens uh, to like the sync is off for some reason. I'm not sure why we've tried multiple reasons. The reason we have the TSC project export uh, is because a lot of customers who use Camtasia were having those sync issues. So the best way we could solve it is by completely alleviating the use of MP4 completely. I don't know why that happens. Cam I mean, I've, I've tried multiple files through Cam Camtasia, but there's just some sync issue that happens with Camtasia and Timebolt when you use them together. That, that, that's why the whole TSC project thing was created, which, which is why when you do media encoder, when you re-encode the MP4s that come from Camtasia, they were they sync up fine. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I, I'm e even I'm not sure why the MP4s which come from Camtasia have those issues. But if we recompress them, then everything's Correct. fine. Or Does if you this... capture it, or if you capture it, just so you know, or, or if you PS capture right. it in a different other something other than Camtasia. Right. Got it. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so the MP4 files just basically can't come from Camtasia. Does yeah, correct. The other part of our workflow that we currently has if there's actually an in-between stage, we go from Camtasia and then we do an audio compression, run FFmpeg on top of the MP4 coming from Camtasia to swap the audio. Would that be causing issues as well? I, I don't know. I'll have to test the exact pipeline. But what I do know for a fact is that if you take it directly from Camtasia, plug it into Timebolt, there will be an issue for longer files. Yeah. I don't know about the new pipeline that you created where you swap the audio. I'd have to test those files. Like I, I, so it I sounds like just before Time Bolt touches it, the easiest workaround at the moment is just to run it's it. It's re-encoded, yeah. They're re re-encoded. Okay, that's... Exactly. And then if I Time Bolt through it, can I then run those clips through Time Bolt again? Yeah, of course. What do you mean by that? So uh, currently the, the workflow that we're doing as a, as a workaround to be able to values uh, in, be, in between our clips, we have to run it twice. And the feature that I requested would be the ideal workflow that we would do so that we wouldn't have to run it through Time Bolt. Basically, we want want to cut out audio above two and a half seconds is two and a half seconds what we want to do is speed up uh basically anything above a half a second uh so the fast forward below a certain time yes that's something we can do um and yeah, i'll, I'll, I'll probably add it to the feature list yeah and okay, I'll, I'll probably have something soon for you guys in that workflow i'm sure it's not unique to us because what we're doing isn't really anything unique like we're just doing standard video tutorial 10 minutes to record a five minute clip and there's a lot of dead space and then there's a lot of micro movements that need to be on screen that might be something jill could use as well having that extra knob in there to be able to and so anything over two and a half seconds like but i, don't, I just don't understand like you just you just assume that that's a breath or that's a purposeful silence no basically so it's what we want to do is anything above two and a half seconds is a hard cut then anywhere from half a second to two and a half seconds is a fast forward. Because you're you typing something that. and you're yeah. keying something. Yeah, like you're typing something or you're moving your mouse or I'm drawing on my tablet. It's micro movements that just can't be cut out or else it's just confusing for the viewer. Excellent. Is there a way that uh, uh, if we're able to put this 
uh, put this feature together. Could you send me some examples? Like, I'd like to see it in action, yep. you know, like. Yep. I, yeah, so I, essentially it is a purposeful pause because you're stopping and you're doing something that you want to show the audience that, yep. hey, look at this. I'm, I'm like moving my mouse. I'm moving my uh, tablet. Uh, we have, we, I'll send you the clips that we currently have because we have that result for current implementation and it works great. We just have to run oh, it through so twice. That's why you have to do it twice. Uh, okay, great. So Robert, do you have any, have any additional questions? That's it. Thanks guys. Excellent. It's nice talking with you. All right. Thanks for choosing Time Bolt. Let's see, we've got an admin. I'm the admin of the show. Admin, are you there? Any questions? Right here, yeah. yeah. I just have a question. Uh, nice to connect uh, with everybody. So w one of the questions I have is, you know, sometimes uh, I try to remove the smaller chunk of gaps, you know? So I basically go with 0.0, .0 blah, blah, blah. So I realized at the end of the video, it just cuts the very last it doesn't say so it does a good job again uh, an awesome application like i said last time but at, when i do this 0, 0.0 blah 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 it does a fine job but just at the last it just cuts the very last piece is that a known issue or is that am i doing something wrong it shouldn't just cut the last piece i mean are you are you rendering in time bold or are you doing xml no i'm rendering with uh, your uh, software uh yeah it shouldn't cut the last piece i don't know of any particular if you if you have a an example file can you screen i can show a screen and we can look at it. if it's 35 right now you can try 36 37 all the way up to 45 usually oh, 45 so is yeah you so you can play with those values these values you should not be file. yeah so these values yeah. you probably will not have to change it, it's it's usually just this yeah but in, in the left padding just that's a good point Chris. but the left padding is going to be 0.01 i mean a just to kind of in your default values, it's 0 0.01 and your right padding is 0 0.15. So anyway, these are the values that, this is the item that you'll have to change. If you make it bigger, it will basically cover more area. If you make it smaller, it will cover less area. And is there is there any ideal values for remove silence 0 0.3? I've actually- uh, There is no, it, it completely depends on your file, but there is an option inside settings. So inside set settings, there is an option which says automatically detect filter value. So if you tick oh, this, see. yeah. So what we'll try to do is we'll try to estimate the best value for your file. But it's not perfect, oh, obviously, so. because your, your file might be have ha having multiple speakers. It might have multiple things happening. So it, it does work in most cases, but us usually it's just better if you know what your file is, right? Like and also, if you could please go on to the settings, uh, there are, uh, if you can click on that wheel. I see you've added uh, increase. Uh, yeah, so these yeah. options are essentially just for detecting the sound better. You can use these, but I would only recommend using them if your audio quality is very poor. Like if you have a lot of background noise, a lot of uh, things in the background, like maybe there's a car, car like turning on, stuff like that. If you have those things happening, then I would recommend these settings. But if you have like, very clean audio, you don't need these. Even the volume increase and the... Uh, yeah, so if you have very clean audio, you don't need these, yeah. Yeah. If you have like good audio, right, where you have like complete silences, like proper silences, like if you see here, the audio is very right. clean. Like there is no sound in the middle, like you're using a great mic microphone. In yeah, those yeah. cases, you don't need, need those settings. You only need them if like there's background noise or something's wrong with your audio or your main speaker is like less. So yeah, I'm right. for you, I'll just say you can try these out. I'm, I'm probably I'll, I'll sure, that. yeah. Yeah. So don't change these Great. settings. These settings don't need to be changed. Oh, well, I've taken a screenshot. I'll, well, I'll, well, hold on. I'll, just a second. Do not use this. But Quinson, can you just go ahead and put your put put? No, no, no. What, don't what use left padding is, at point uh, one or it, it should. You can like the default settings. Are, yeah. So it'd be point oh one and then point one five for right padding. Point one five for right padding and remove silence is longer okay. than must be at point five. Otherwise, you you're gonna take another screenshot. The right yeah. right right padding is point one five. You can't go like point one five. Yeah, you can, you must have right padding at 0.15 or you will okay, cut off words. This is exactly what you want right here. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank, uh, you bet. You bet. Well, thanks for joining us. I know we've got uh, uh, Liam, how are you doing? Can you uh, ex can you introduce yourself a little bit? Give us some context of when, when you started using Time Bolt, what type of content you make? Uh, so I'm a YouTuber and I've been using editors, but it's just getting really expensive. Um, and so I just wanted to try out the software and see uh, if it works for me. It looks like it's going to save a lot of time. Thing is, is that I've been, I've been having an issue using it. I'm not exactly sure where the problem is stemming from. So I'm just wondering if you could walk me through this and uh, figure out what the problem is. I'll open up Time Bolt as well, right? Here. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I've uploaded uh, the way I'm going to be using it. I, I have so many clips that are. Um, I have so many camera angles and like audio files. I record the audio separate. So what I'm thinking of doing is just cutting. Uh, one of the audio files and then dropping everything into a session and then chopping according to the chops that have been made in the XML. This is, I have so many clips that this is the quickest way of me to do it, unless you guys have any other options, maybe. How many clips do you have? Like I have three camera angles, two iPhone, like an audio file. 
like a Zoom. So we have a plugin for this for Premiere Pro, but I, I, I don't think you're using Premiere Pro, right? No, I'm using DaVinci. DaVinci Resolve, okay. There is a method uh, for, for doing this sort of file, like it's called the, it's called multicam. So if you go to utilities, so there is at, at, at the top, there is in, in the taskbar, in the, at the top, at the top of your screen, oh, help, sorry. yeah, utilities. There's multicam sync helper. Right? Okay. So there's a whole process of like how to, so it's easier in Premiere Pro, but obviously you're not using that. So, I mean, there is a whole tutorial for there's, this. Yeah, stuff. it's, it's on the homepage of our website, just so you know. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's better if you see the tutorial because I mean, it's a complex process, which, which is the reason why we built the, the Premiere Pro plugin is that it makes this whole process very easy, but I, I don't know well, if so I'll be able just to explain to stop it you to for you. a second, this, uh, this is not possible on DaVinci. Process that you're explaining is not possible on DaVinci. No, it, 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 is, it is possible. It's just that okay. it, it's a little complex. That's what, that's okay. what I'm saying. Uh, Doug, can you link that article in the chat? Yeah. Uh, that, that video in the chat? Yeah, let me, we've got we've got a whole tutorial video uh, yeah, yeah. for guys like yourself who are like legitimate into this. Like once you learn how to do it once, yeah, you, you'll you'll know how to do it. I mean, it involves shifting. You just need to make sure. I think I think the best thing that we could do, Quinston, with this is just explain. Hey, look, make sure you have one master wave audio or wave or video audio file, yeah. right? Like like there has to your master audio, whether that has a video attached or no video attached, that should be the one longest file. That's what you should hit record on. First and then stop record on last, okay? Because that's what you're going to set everything up to your zero zero on your marks, and then you're going to go in and begin to layer your cam your different cameras on top of that and find out how far shifted are they from that zero zero mark, and then use this tool to figure out what the shifts and the cuts. And so then once you cut up your master audio file, you're going to apply those same cuts to your additional cameras, which will be shifted by the number that you found. So that's and you're and you're going to want to make sure that you're not going to hit record on camera two, you know, halfway through your wave file and then stop recording and then hit it again three quarters of the way. So you've got two, you know, camera two in two places on that timeline. Like once you hit start record on camera two, let it continue to record. Like you see, you see people like have, like it's the same camera, but they'll have two different record sections. So they're like split apart. They're not just one file. So it's essentially going to look like stacks of of videos atop your wave file so it's a feature called shift and you just uh i'm sure you're kind of looking at it right now yeah through the chat and do you want to take a look at that and do you just want you want a second to read it we got a video on there and stuff like that do you want a second to read it while we get to hano and then we can get back um, to you and see if you have any questions or do you have other additional questions well, I, I just have one because just out of curiosity like how long would, would that process take like complex process would it just be easier to chop one audio and then drop that into the session and then just chop according to that audio in the session I mean, that that will definitely take more time it's you see, it will take you initially it will take you some time to learn how it works but once you know how it works it'll be much faster yeah that's, it, yeah. How long are your videos typically? Uh, they're about twenty minutes. Yeah, each. dude, definitely. Listen, you're. I mean, it's gonna. It's just gonna take you probably fifteen minutes to like learn. I, I you know, it's gonna take you about fifteen minutes, twenty minutes to learn how to do to set it all up, right? But then, you know, if you've got twenty minute long videos, it's probably maybe 30, 40 minute long recordings with five yeah. different, you are definitely going to save a boatload of time learning how to do shift, right? Okay. Uh, I'd definitely do that if I were you. Okay, cool. It works. Cool. You need to make sure everything is recorded at the same frame rate. That's not the way it is with Adobe Premiere. Like we got like a push button simple, like drop it in. And I mean, it's like, looks like magic. This is just a little more involved. And it doesn't matter what frame rate you capture at, but when it comes to this, you have to make sure everything is the same frame rate. Awesome. Uh, cool. I'll check this out and yeah, maybe, maybe I'll come back. Like, how long are you guys on here for? Uh, Hano usually keeps us on for a long time because he always has a bunch of stuff for us to do. So we have him okay. to thank for batch processing and a bunch of stuff. So okay, well, I'll come back and uh, if I have any questions. Sure. Sounds good. Right. Please do. Please do. Thank you guys. Nice meeting you. Thanks for choosing Time Bolt. Hano, uh, how's it going? Thanks. I don't know. Pretty good, apart from the fact that I'm sick. <clears throat> Start talking, uh, Zoom <laughs> is connecting. Uh, the first thing I have is a bug, which is that the picture is out of frame when patch processing, probably when different videos are in different resolution. Have you noticed that? Different videos are in different resolutions. Oh, can you give me an example? Yeah, I do have an example. I paired with Doug, I think, uh, the Google Drive link. I can, no, I don't know that but anyway, there are uh, three in Google Drive. You probably see those files. And uh, I have a top folder there with the three original videos mm -hmm. I used to fetch process. There are three results. I think the file without filtered in the name in the main folder, the last file, 733 megabytes is um, original. Yes, I yeah. think it already also in the subfolder. Yeah, it is same file. So, so, so what's happening exactly to the files? What's, what's happening? To left side of the screen about uh, is um, 
It happens when you process the file. Yeah. Have it, you tried it, processing it in individually? Yes. Then it works as intended. Uh, I'll check it out. Yeah. Yeah. I These are the it. sample files you can try test on. So, those. so you're saying that uh, when you process it in batch processing, there is a black bar on on yeah. the side, and when you process it directly individually without any of the files, there's hmm. a black bar, uh, and the other side is cut out. If you look at, uh, if you just click on the filter batch. Oh, it doesn't show up in uh, but in preview when you do it, you can see that there's like you don't uh, yeah, there's a black bar on the side. So it only happens when you batch process. You don't uh... yeah, it's a little weird. It's got to be user error. <laughs> <laughs> it's called blame the customer. We love blaming the customers at Time Bolt. That's okay, I, I I probably will figure this out. We need to like test. I've never even it. heard of. I mean, seriously. I mean, I do a lot of video with Time Bolt. I've yeah, just I mean, never even seen. If you do it individually, it happens. Blah, blah, blah. But do you think it blah, blah, would be because of different resolution? No, because the the files are separated, right? So every file is own. Like every file is processed separately. It has its own layer and run. I've never and even and seen bars put anywhere on any video ever. Yeah, see, like these are the types of things I'm so glad we have office hours for because I don't know if I could really believe it. I'm like bars on the, you know, because I've just, I've literally never ever seen Timebolt not do exactly what the file was ori originally, you know, the, the original size. Right? Okay, I'll process it and figure it out. Let's just... And uh, I would like to report another bug. Uh, the, that is um, when I, using batch processing, I noticed that the audio is not in sync with video. Does it happen after a certain period of time? Like length? Mm. Does duration matter? Or like, because we... Cause... Seems to be progressive. So at the end of uh, mm -hmm. at the beginning of the video, it's not so noticeable at, as. Are, are you recording video. using QuickTime? Um, Zoom. Oh, let uh, me ask you this. Good question, Quinston. Shit, Zoom. Okay, so did you see our blog post about Zoom video? Probably not. It's like blog. So what happens is there is a enable third party editor button that you have to click. Right? Do you click that? Can you show him what the button? Yeah. Is? Uh, I think those files were today. I installed Zoom on my new computer and I forgot to click it. But uh, I processed uh, the files today and I already uploaded it to YouTube. Uh, I haven't yet. If I if there is a audio skew or something uh, there in the YouTube uh, version, I should probably check now that you right here. Yeah. No, that's a yeah. I, I yeah. I know where it is. Oh, here it is. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so you know, so you've seen this just for everyone else uh, recording. You must make sure that enable. Optimize for third-party editor yeah. is click what because if, if I don't do this, it, it records it as it'll, a. It'll be out of sync. It, it'll rec it records a as a var file. variable okay. frame rate, right? It, it creates a variable uh, frame rate, which oh, yeah. makes it impossible. It makes it very okay. difficult to cause sync issues. Uh, previously, I remember that um, first time I uh, tried Timebolt, I saw some green after Timebolt had, had processed the video. And then I found out about this optimized uh, checkbox and I turned it in and turned it on and uh, everything. But uh, the processing time in Zoom. Uh, yeah, oh now, yeah. And it'll be harder and, and it'll take longer if, in Timebolt. Uh, if I, I, yeah, I checked. I didn't see any green frames now when the checkbox was off today. And I thought that, wow, great, Timebolt now understands how to process Zoom videos without this checkbox. But maybe that's the reason why why I have that. Uh, so one, one, one more thing is that uh, when when you are using Quick, so what player do you use? Which player do you play the videos with? Is it QuickTime player? Player, player. 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 Quick time player? Yeah, I, is, is I that... guess quick quick time, yes. Oh, okay. Can you try the try to play the video? The same video, can you try to play it with VLC player? Uh, okay. Do you have VLC on your computer? But uh, so, so I do one thing. Just, just, yeah, just, just try and play better. the same video with VLC player and see if you get the same results. How about YouTube player? Yeah, that's what that's, that's the other one. Yeah, so you YouTube should work. YouTube also it, are, are the same sync issues happening on YouTube? I don't know. I can uh, put you the link that I just uploaded to YouTube, which is the freshest video I have right now, which okay. is a uh, Ordered on this new computer today without this optimized checkbox. It's so, gonna be hard to tell unless we yeah. crank up the audio because there's no talking head in the. Yeah, maybe the last frames. I don't know. I doesn't have no no word. It kind of looks like it's actually in sync. What what Quinston's saying is that I mean you can still do the the, the variable. But you could still not have to click that button. But if you try and preview it in QuickTime on your computer, it's going to look out of sync. But once you upload it to YouTube or uh, what look at in VLC, the sync fixes itself. The problem is, is that still inside Timebolt is that it actually edits slower if you have a variable frame rate as as well. Like it, like when you're going through the timeline, it'll like take longer to jump over a pause than it does if you have a constant. So you mean when I'm editing in Timebolt? In, in Timebolt, yeah. So we yeah, there's no that. reason not to click that button.
maybe I have a fast computer. I bet you do got the M2. He's got the new M2. I, I, well, I thought, yeah. I mean, Quincy, I was, I was about ready to email you that didn't work on the M2, but luckily that was just bullshit and it does work. On yeah. What, ha what I, happened? I, everything I tried, uh, nothing worked uh, until I did a total reset of macOS. Then I got rid of this problem. So I don't know what happened. And, you're and I haven't had this problem again. Have you had the bar problem any? Like, was it just this one time or? I haven't time? tried patch program, patch uh, processing after that. Or maybe I did, but uh, not with different resolutions of the videos. Yeah, can you just test your files with VL? So two things. One is uh, I can't verify whether the YouTube video is uh, in sync or out of sync because there is no speaking, because there is no head, right? It's a screen recording. I yeah. don't know if it's in sync or not in sync. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I will process the videos myself. So I process them myself. And I'll check for the black bars and see if the, if the audio sync is something I don't, I don't know how to verify it. Um, like, I don't know how to test for it. So maybe you can help me with that. Like, yeah, there's a part in the video where I write and I uh, speak the things that I write. And that's so what I'm saying. I was looking at that on YouTube and even though I can't speak, uh, I don't know what. No, Estonian. What, Est okay, Estonian. Even though I can't, I was kind of looking at the tempo of what you were saying as it was the words were being typed out, just like you said. I think I may have just happened to land on that part, but it did look like it was insane. How about we just? How about? How about if we can do this? If you go back and make sure that optimize for third party editor is clicked and try the process again, can you just see if that fixes all okay. issues? I, I love to check the black bars thing, but yeah, the audio sync is something I, I don't know how to check. Yeah, so for now, what I'll do is I just test for the black bars. Uh, you can confirm the audio thing next week and then we can try again. And uh, there are a couple of questions I have. Does Time Vault just merge the clips without re encoding or it re encodes the video? It uh, does not re encode. No, so it, 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 it encodes when it's. Uh, breaking them but then when it's joining them it doesn't re-encode so there's there are two processes versus breaking the clips when it breaks it is it takes one part out and then it encodes that part but then when all the parts are available when it joins the parts together it doesn't encode them okay it copies them one after the other would it be possible to use ffmpeg i assume you are using ffmpeg yeah yes would it be possible i know that on the command line you can tell ffmpeg uh, uh, where to start and where to end the clip and uh, just for the code that you use copy yeah but cop the problem with copy is that when you're merging clips right so cop the, the, the issue with copy is you it, it causes a lot of issues it causes a lot of issues when, when it comes to merging clips there's some issue which happens when you are flipping from one clip to another and that that, that joining part that part it sometimes becomes green it sometimes like loses pixels yeah. it sometimes so there's a lot of issues you the best way is to like re-encode them so another question is uh, why does it take so much time to load the ui i upgraded from nine year old uh, fourth gen i7 to m2 and i didn't seem to be so big of a difference yeah. in loading uh so when the ui is being loaded it's actually being processed so what the happens is first the audio from the video is being stripped so it it strips the audio from the video that that, that, that process happened then it basically tries to analyze the audio at, the, at that time and check where the silences are and where the sound is. That process is basically where the audio is getting converted into a buffer. That buffer is then an analyzed to find, find the loudness of clips. And then each loudness is calculated for each frame. And then it basically uh, clumps it together into big uh, chunks where sound is there and sound is not there. That information is being relayed to the algorithm. And then the UI is trying to be presented and then that and then the UIs. So all the processing happens in that time, basically the processing of the file. Could it be possible to do it like, uh, for example, I have ScreenFlow, import another clip to ScreenFlow, I can just do it in a second or less and I can drop it to the time, uh, whatever it is called, the place where I can drop the clip. ScreenFlow uh, just uh, shows me a blank rectangular area and then it gradually starts painting the waveform can you do the same that I can already work I mean, on? We, we could, but then it'll, it'll like create a lot of confusion. I, I don't know of a, for this sort of application, right, where I have to show the full UI before I can start processing because you can't play with the timeline until it's fully formed because then you don't know whether it's green or red, right? You don't know which parts are being kept, which parts are to be deleted. Could you use another thread to uh, scan the... No, of, yeah, of course part. we can. Yeah, we can, we can do that. I mean, noticed. we tried multiple ways. Uh, one way that I thought about was to do it post UI. So you just load the UI without processing anything. And then when the customer wants to start the process, they can click a button and start it. But that creates an issue when it comes to user interface, uh, sorry, uh, user experience. So when we were launching the product, uh, we wanted the users to not do anything. Like we thought the, the idea was for the users to come to a finished process. That was the idea. If you have like, I'm, I'm, yours particularly are longer files, right? So you have files which are 20 minutes long, 30 minutes long, 40 minutes long. When people are testing out this product, they are putting in a 10 minute file. So the when a, so this is purely from a user perspective, like a user experience perspective, where I have a 10, 10 minute file, want to know if it works. 
So you put in a 10, 10 minute file and see. And if, if, if I, we wanted at that point in time for the user to be able to see that file incredibly fast. So a 10 minute file will be much faster than a 20 minute file, 30 minute file, 60 yeah. minute file. So it, it gives the user confidence that, oh, this product works. I mean, that, that was the main reason for like proof of concept with it, telling people that, hey, this actually works. Okay. So it was faster to implement it like that. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it was faster to implement. Plus it was better when it comes to a confidence standpoint to show the customer that, hey, your 10 minute file got processed in less than a minute. Okay. So let me ask you, let me ask this question. So I'm, I'm just kind of, so if I'm on, uh, no, I've got an eight hour, eight hour video, right? You're like the eight hour video guy uh, that cuts out five hours. You end up with a three hour video. You got five, eight hour videos because you cut, you made them all for the week. Let's just assume you got five videos. So now you want to batch process those. The way it's working right now is that when you throw that into, when you hit the batch process, it mm -hmm. will go through and grab all that all the all the files and run them all up right but then you still have to come back okay the reason why your weight is important to you because you're still having to come back to push one button which is start rendering correct oh no it starts rendering automatically it does yeah. oh it does start yeah. oh yeah. all of them oh cool okay so what's slow then uh the process has uh, changed this year uh, because everybody wants to have the video immediately now i i'm not forgetting to uh, to process the video right away I don't have any more uh, five videos for the week. I just have single uh, videos. And now I remember the first time you asked me that edit my videos at all or just put them all out. And now I have uh, started to edit my videos. Uh, and now the difference is also that I um, had uh, many occasions where I give my lectures from home. So I don't have to run away right uh, to the bus or car. Uh, I have time in home to edit some videos. So what I do mostly is that I edit parts I already know I have to cut out like the beginnings where we were just waiting that uh, everybody is uh, and we are discussing like uh, off topic things before we start. And, and you're the using part... the o, o key, right? You're using the O key to do that, right? You're not yeah. going, okay. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Okay. Uh, I also cut out the parts that I know that um, were off topic uh, in the middle of the video where I screwed up. I, I teach web programming and uh, I know that it was a dead end, like 15 minutes. So I find that part and cut it out. And this is another place where I would like some improvement in screen flow i can just find the starting and then use the marker and then i just uh, speed scroll through until i find, find the end marker and then i just ripple delete everything in between you just keep i have to press so very many times i don't know how to fix that because i mean time world wouldn't know where to stop right? yeah uh, i have a feature request about that um i would like the ability to uh, customize the keyboard shortcuts and um, have uh, new uh, keys I would use I and O like I do in ScreenFlow. When I press I, it marks this place. And I when I press O, it marks another place. And when I then press Command Backspace, it uh, marks every uh, section in between uh, the in and out mm. as red. Yes, ah. it doesn't like the ah, yeah. idea of changing the O button. Well, we, I don't know if we'd have to change the... It, well, we use markers. But what you're saying is an in and out section to create a like a chunk to where you could just delete everything in between but right because right now what do you know about the marker feature i mean you know so much time but like do, have you I tried know the new tests but i don't know well it's it like we also built the markers features a way to i mean you know see if this if you got your end point right and if you got your exit point it just basically does two yellow highlights and then you just go back and just cut out everything in the middle if that's what you were like looking for a visual waypoint to figure out where to cut from uh the markers feature particularly i, I don't know do you have any questions about the in and out i don't know how that would work in time bolt it's, it's not bad you know it's kind of interesting to do I'll, I'll think about this. but but uh, no I, I i would i would let me just get let me just finish real quick the you do your in and out with your markers with the m you could do that right now you can visually provide the waypoint what uh, do i have to press m, for m. yeah and it and it here else so it's in or out uh it's okay. it, so this this is the thing okay so right here m right see that red bar or the, i'm sorry the uh the yellow bar so this can be three things okay the marker can be any number of things the one of the three things is the visual waypoint so i know hey look this is a good cut uh or that's just a place that i don't want to go and i'm and i end up getting all the way down here and i'm like oh wait this was actually all a retake you know so i just put my m here and so now i just go in and just go oh 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 oh, oh. you know what i'm saying okay. And then that's the thing I want to avoid. Oh, 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 oh. Well, okay. Well, I, I, I appreciate that, but you know, it, it took two seconds. Yeah, but if uh, I speak uh, uh, very often, uh, very segmented way, I have uh, like very many three or four words in one. So I have very many cuts, and if it's fifteen minutes long, then I have like two hundred of them. You want you want a way to bulk cut major sections yeah. of content. 
I get it. I, I do. I, I get it. I really do. That makes, oh, I, I think about this. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Let's let's it's, see. It's that. not a bad idea. We're like not a bad idea at all. Okay. I'm, I mean, I would, ideally, I would like to use I and O uh, buttons. Or, and that's or, another good idea because that wouldn't interfere with our markers. Because then, as opposed to a visual waypoint doing in and out, the M. Just so you know, this is important. As you get into editing, these markers serve two purposes. Uh, one is you can use it to, like, if somebody gives a glowing review of Time Bolt on one of these, you know, on the show, I can go in and find out where. As I'm scrolling through, I can click M, right, and the camera. I basically have like a at the end of this, I have like a highlight reel. Okay, I could have a three-hour video, and I could go keep only mark cuts. Okay. Could do keep only mark cuts and out of this, you know, two hour timeline, I've got all I do yeah, is okay. I, I can understand the use case. You know, it's yeah. It's my use case. So yeah. So then so so understanding that the second part of this is for your YouTube. How if you look at if you look at all like we're on we're on this call for like an hour and a half, right? But one thing that you do when you go to our YouTube channel, all of our stuff is chaptered out. And what we, what it used to take me, you'd get done with one long video and then because minute, five minutes and 25 seconds isn't actually gonna be five minute and 25 seconds in the actual video, right? It's not like I could mark down, hey, at 525 I started talking about a new subject because it'll probably end up being one minute, you know, minute 25 when, when you, you actually, export, when you uh, export it. Okay. Yes. So now, so now what happens, check this out. So now at five minutes and 25 seconds, okay, when I do this, I know uh, I can go download markers text file. Now, check this out. It recalibrates where, <laughs> I love this thing. It recalibrates where that is. So now, instead of having to go back after you get done doing your first pass and getting it all cut up and then uploading to YouTube and now having to go back and actually oh, watch through it again. Yeah. Okay, I'm talking about this save, if you have a three hour video, this saves you three hours because you're already doing it. And what mm -hmm. happens is, and what happens is now all you do is you make sure that you save this, and Quincy, I'm gonna to talk to you about something. Uh, you make sure that you save this, and now you open this up, you drop it right into, drop it right in, it's formatted, yeah. drop it right into YouTube, and you just fill out, go to that place in the video, and say, oh yeah, that's where I start talking about this, that's where I start talking about this, and now you can fill out your markers reference. Sorry, if you, if you have already done it, but uh, that should be a video. Yes, sir. So, that's a good good point, that's a good point. So where, where it's at right now, just so you know, okay, where it's at right now, is keep only mark cuts that's where you can learn all about markers okay so i mean the use case with youtube 100 yeah yeah so there's that's the thing what's so cool about what quinston built here is that you know markers isn't just for building shorts it isn't just for you know doing youtube videos i mean they have any or, or waypoints or, right so this right this, this, all mark clips so you can require you to reload your so it'll take you through how to use the markers for both YouTube. And uh, as another example, this is going to take longer to render, but also our YouTube videos that I upload are all actually 1.125x faster. So yeah, I actually, I, so yeah. like, that's why I sound smarter, you know, on YouTube than I do in real life. And, and so that's when you, if, if you do activate turbo mode, now imagine, not only is the, is that not going to be at five, the marker is not going to be at five minutes and 25 seconds. It's also not going to be at, you know, 17 seconds. It's going to be 17 seconds minus 12.5% because that's essentially what I'm speeding it up as. So now I want to go through and download the markers text file specifically for turbo mode or the markers won't line up. But that's a huge thing for guys like you and guys like me doing these long Zoom calls. Had you, have you written down the... In and out marks portions between in and out and deletes them all. Yeah, that's the, yeah. Uh, the delete part, uh, how it's supposed to work. Uh, I think uh, it just mark as red everything. Between. Yeah, everything is red, exactly. Delete yeah. means turn it off. I, I still, I mean, I'll think about it because there's going to be a little bit of complication. In, in and out, when you do in and out, there would need to be some sort of like a button which says, do you want to keep them all or move them all? Or something, I don't know. I'll think, I'll think, think about it. I'll need some time to like figure out how to incorporate that in the UI. Or maybe I can find a way which is a little different, a different way, but also achieves the same goal. Yeah, so I need to like you want to expand the feature to uh, enable the inverse. Exactly, of, uh, e enable and disable both. Basically, ah, one more thing about this: when you implement the in and out, for example, if you press the in button uh, the first time, some part in the video treat it as though if the in part is, um, let me visualize what I do in screen flow. If I press the in, okay. When I press the out first, then it uh, should consider the in part, the beginning of the video. So I, if I press just the out button, it should uh, mark from the beginning of the video to the point where I press the out key. Right. And if I press the in key, then the reverse. So I just press the in key, 
then the out point would be the end of the video. However, uh, after that, when I go to some other place in the video, now the opposite key, for example, if the first key was the in point, I scroll a little bit, um, fast forward a little bit the video, and then I press the O key, then it should uh, change go back the, to the previous one. Yeah. Chain from end of the video uh, place where the playhead is right now. Oh, so you want the out to expand? Yeah. So the first key was the I key, marks the uh, in point. The default out point would be the end of the video. And mm. when I just um, move the playhead a little bit um, to the right and then press the O key, then it uh, changes from the end of the video to the point where the playhead is. Why? Because uh, a lot of times uh, I want to cut only the beginning of the video. I just find the place where the actual, and I just press the O key, is that the uh, beginning of the video is the default uh, and the O key where I press the O key is the end point and Correct. I just have to press one key to in and out yeah. from the beginning I know. the place where we can't do O but right now. want to mark everything uh, and that you know like that's kind of interesting one, one thing I was uh, editing my dog video like these dog videos okay I'll notice that I'll have like cuts like the like little segments like let's say I want to speed up uh, a four minute segment the, like an interaction right well what I'll notice is that I'll have to go through and do each, you know, and there might be like 15 cuts plus the red part. So I'm going through and manually doing yellow, 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 yellow. You know what I'm saying? There's like, so then you've got 15 different actions to keep like a 30 or 40 second full piece all uh, sped up. So like whether it's on or off or sped up, right? I think that there's, that's also a use case because I do oh, notice. So the, the, the goal of this feature, I, now I don't know if it'll be, executed exactly as we discussed goal in my head is to turn off large chunks of, of of sequential cuts that's the goal now okay this is one approach let me like spend some time with the problem and see what i can come, come up with what is executable what, what would can i share my screen for a moment oh, never mind i don't have screen flow installed on this new computer no i, I know the feature i use it in premiere pro like i know the okay feature. you also yeah. press i know and then uh, yeah, yeah it's in premiere pro it's the same yeah yeah. Okay. So it's like ingrained in my the IADO and uh, command backspace. That's what I use uh, very many times. Yes. Lazy loading of the video. Drop the video onto time bolt. Would like to see empty rect rectangle first, and then I want to see how the rectangle is slowly filled with uh, waveform. But uh, the part where which is uh, in the viewport part I see is already painted with the waveform. I want to already begin working on, on the, that part. Um, meanwhile, the rest of the video can slowly draw the waveform drawn, but I only see a small part of the entire clip. So I want to begin working on the part when I, which I see in the beginning, the beginning of the video. The Start first working chunk. It before it. So you're loading up about uh, yeah, 15 that, that, That's a little more difficult yeah. to do. That I, I can't promise that will be done fast. It'll take much more time. We'll need to like, to do that feature, it'll, it'll, it'll need re re reconfiguration of the entire architecture, like how the architecture works, because unless the whole, at the way it works right now, it has to go through the entire waveform. But I mean, it will require a bunch of re-engineering of how the product works internally. Yeah, but basically, it should have the uh, multiple uh, and uh, the other thread is uh, painting the waveform and the other thread uh, enables me to work on the part which is already painted and uh, is the time bolt uh, app uh, multi-threaded already pseudo multi-threaded like like uh, I, i'd say it has one process but it has like it uses javascript uh, yeah, right so it has callbacks here so it's uh, the javascript uh, event loop which is uh, yeah exactly okay i understand uh, so the next thing is that um, is it possible to if i do batch processing uh, to open up multiple uh, copies of time bolt to maximize no. the utilization. No, 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 right that time bolt only uses about 33% of my Mac. And uh, I've seen uh, in Handbrake that Handbrake can use 800% of my Mac. Maybe if I could have uh, multiple instances of time bolt open, I could uh, I could uh, utilize my CPU better. I, I, I don't think that would be possible um, simply because the directory access. So when time bolt opens, it has to delete a lot of directories which it created in the last instance. I'll, I'll have to see. Maybe you can do temporary. Something like that. We'll need to change though. <laughs> I'll think about this here. I could actually use that. That's funny. <laughs> I could actually use that this last this last week. I mean, because I've had like two or three projects going, you know, like a, a video. It's kind of funny. Or, or is it possible? Or would it also make more sense just for us at a future date to focus on what is it going to take to do multi-threaded processing and like, you know, kind of be optimized for an M1 chip? I don't know if that's 
super complex. Yeah, I, I, I think it's more of an M1, M, M1 thing than, than, than a, because my, when, when, when I render on my computer, like it uses a lot, a lot, a lot of... Yeah, definitely like, probably an M1 thing. What if we do right now? What you said right now? No, we're, uh, yeah, we're talking about your problem, the M1, if it's possible to do multi-threaded process. No, it, it, it goes to 95 on my computer. Yeah, I think it's an M, M thing. Because it's so powerful? Uh, no, because I don't think it's completely up, because the version of FMPEG we're using is x86. So it, it, it has to go through the Rosetta too. So if you have like a native version of ARM, like a native ARM version of FFmpeg, it might work better, work faster, yeah. Hmm. Probably can. Oh, you have been Demic like figuring it out. No, I, I, I mean, Doug has one. I mean, it should be fine. Like I can get one. And I'm, just, I'm in the process of replacing. I, I have the Intel Mac. So I'm gonna replace that Intel Mac with the M2 or the M1. Is it? Do you have any additional questions to know? No, uh, I went through my whole list. Excellent, excellent. No, it's, you always got a good list for us, um, and and great things for us to think the about. The idea it. about like. Uh, like removing a, like a big chunk of that's an interesting idea and that, that, that's the most interesting feature you suggested <laughs> yeah the in and out thing uh because yeah I, you just when you're dealing with long zooms yeah you just get like whether it's a yeah pressing uh, the over and constantly might, whether it's might a not guest or just you know something okay, has... what if what if there is like a dialog box which, which gives you like two options and it says in time out time you enter those times and say turn off everything between these times i don't want to enter numbers <laughs> I know. That's a trick question. <laughs> well, you could, you, yeah, in, you'd have to be able to click the the seconds that are on top, you know, and make that clickable if that's what you're. And just, I'm just thinking of what what UI could have because in and out, and then there needs to be some sort of button which prompts that the, the removal. What oh, sort of UI would? Uh, what What do you have in mind? What do you want to provide? I don't have anything in mind. I'm just like still confused. <laughs> Yeah, how yeah, to execute. Software are using the feature uh, all the time. No, we just use O, like as Doug said, like I just press O all the time. Like I just press O until yeah, oh, no, at I, the moment. Okay. Yeah. That's a different uh, thing. Thought that you were also using Premiere or something where you have in and out points and you can replace. No, no, I do use Premiere, but when I use Time Bold, I just press O. So Premiere obviously is used, like I use Premiere for a different purpose than I use Time Bold. Like everything, if, if I'm editing a video, I just, I always put it in Time Bold just to remove the silences. That's just like a thing. Yeah, and I, I, I never do timeline work in those. Yeah, I, I, and then I do XML and then export it to, to Premiere Pro. I tried to do it uh, with Final Cut Pro, but uh, I haven't used Ti Final Cut Pro uh, before. So uh, I was stuck. Uh, how do I how do I export in Final Cut Pro? The, because the only options I have was like uh, my 800 megabyte file would be 200 gigabyte files. I know I have to install compressor or something. Uh, what, 800 will become 200 or what? Yes, 800 megabytes become 200 gigabytes. I think the default um, options are lossless compression, the uh, Apple Pro. Oh, okay. So, uh, For the screen the share smallest, video? Smallest uh, was uh, like 10 gigabytes. The mo smallest option I could find in Final Cut Pro. No, you, know you, you need to watch more tutorials. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to be on their office hours, you know. Like, look, I'm, I got, I just got a screen share here, you know. I remember ten years ago, this would be ten megabits. Now I'm ten gigs. Can you like, use this Final Cut Pro? Don't can you make this like three? You know, can you make this three D for me or something at least at that size? Do you, I? I don't have. Do you have any more questions? We, uh, I think. No, he has a Final Cut Pro question. Oh well, I don't know that question because yeah, I have to. I, I don't know how to. I've never, I always just go export and I just do the native because I'm only doing brand videos in Final Cut. I'm not doing like these types of videos. So maybe I'll try Premiere then. Yeah, Premiere is better because you have that option where you can select which uh, format you want no, you can... to export in. Yeah, no, like, I'm just saying. Like H.264, H.264. Yeah, Final Cut has the same thing. It does. I just don't know. I can't. I, I wish I was. Yeah, I mean, you'll probably need to watch a watch a YouTube yeah. tutorial for that. Yeah. Yeah. That but yeah, I mean, uh, the way I use Timebolt is that I I do some cut work. I just like I go so when I put a video inside Timebolt, I it will do the transit detect, detection, and then I just like uh, go through the video, watch it once, and just remove the parts I don't want, and then I export XX, X, X, XML, and then take it in Premiere Pro, and then finish the editing there, and then render it from Premiere Pro. Why there? And not in Time Bolt. Uh, because it's just more flexibility. Like Time Bolt is not built for that sort of like I, I can change the audio tracks, I can add music, I can do a lot of other things. So yeah, add it's important. Outro. He's at yeah, he's he's saying he doesn't do it for all. I mean, there's gonna be the videos go on a spectrum, right? You got things that are quick videos, and then you got brand videos. Like so, so whatever you don't have to add design to, just render it right in Time Bolt, right? I don't add design to, to zoom. I don't even know what you would be doing. Are you in Final Cut Pro editing zoom video? 
No, I just downloaded Final Cut Pro to make the export faster because as I told you, my Mac only uses 34% of the CPU to, uh, when time bolt exports. It's going to take a lot longer if you do two things. If you do not hit the e the third party editor, it's going to take longer to export out of time bolt. And if you uh, turn turbo on, it's going to take longer to export out of time. Just so you know. Yeah, I didn't use turbo before. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, good deal. Well, uh... yeah, so uh, I, I just say like, you, sh you can try, I'll suggest if you have a Mac, it's better to use Final Cut Pro because uh, rendering in Final Cut on a Mac is much faster than pre Premiere. Uh, but this is just the thing about Final Cut Pro is that it's a little bit more complex in my opinion than, than Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro is much easier. Trying to export the video faster than Time Bolt allows me to do it. Yeah, I mean, Final Cut Pro because it runs native, because it has like much more yep, native yep. integration with the hardware, it'll be much faster. Yeah, that's, that's what the idea. You'll need to watch a tutorial on how to like get the best. I you know already know. that I have to install something called Compressor and then uh, that will give me some okay. extra options. Okay. Uh, I'll check. Awesome. Okay. So I, I, yeah, I mean, great suggestions. We will be working on those. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, joining us in those suggestions. So now, well, excellent. This, is, out. this has been a uh, fantastic uh, show, and if I may say so myself. So you'll definitely want to hit the like button, subscribe, and the notification bell. And we are out of time. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Bye -bye. Have a good one.